she won't be silenced. That being Raziel Warmonic, a longtime friend and moderator of Niji Sanji English's Luka Kaneshiro. And now releasing a nearly 70 page document entitled My Experience with Java slash Luka Kaneshiro. This being a chronological document complete with numerous messages between the two, detailing Luka's time before and within Niji Sanji and numerous issues within. Alongside major allegations at the end of the document, TBS being provided further documentation to verify the legitimacy of these screenshots within this document, as it begins with any Discord messages from one boo or re is Java slash Luca. He has changed his Discord name and profile picture several times. That coming after numerous warnings of what is within this document. For best understanding, it is recommended to listen to this from beginning to end, as it begins with the subject of why does this document exist? Reading more information, such as the Niji Sanji contract, has come out along with another individual in the know, confessing to me that Luka Kaneshiro has allegedly harassed others inside of Niji Sanji. I believe it is my responsibility to bring to light his problematic behavior and patterns of abuse as both Java and Luca were those who may be in a situation which does not allow them to speak or act. This is also to touch upon the internal issues of any color's management of their talents. Any documents are simply meant to prove the credibility of my story and that I was deeply involved with Luca. While some may be asking, why didn't I do this sooner? I'll be completely honest, no one cared. I am, to this day, harassed and sent death threats by Luca's fan base. They actively suppress, lie, and spread vicious rumors to try and discredit me. I would get anonymous d in my marshmallow and from sock puppet Twitter accounts. So I gave up for a long time. The next section entitled, Who Am I? I have been streaming on Twitch since 2014 and have been a Twitch partner since July of 2015. I worked as a community manager at a major gaming publisher for a couple of years before I got laid off and started working at one of the top global Hollywood agencies as a social media consultant for outside organizations and our own influencers, those being streamers and YouTubers. This is all to say I know a bit about streaming, social media, marketing, and PR at the very least, and how it should look from the inside. When Java and I met, I was known as Raziel Warmonic up until he became Luka Kaneshiro, and I made a new alias, Mizuchi, to help distance myself from our extensive past together under the advice of another Niji Sanji liver. After losing contact with Luka, I decided it would be the healthiest decision if I abandoned that pseudonym and went back to my original alias. Java and I, while extremely close, never dated and we never met up IRL. He was 18 and I was 24 when we first came in contact with each other. History pre Niji Sanji. Java and I met in VR chat sometime early December 2018. We were a part of an 18 plus VR chat lobby ran by a streamer for content by the name of Rafflegator, also known as Rob. These lobbies were role play RP oriented and took place in a bar world that Rafflegator commissioned and owned. We started interacting with each other when Java and asked Rafflegator if he would set up his character on a date with mine. This was a very popular form of RP at the time in Rafflegator's lobbies, so it was nothing out of the ordinary. The type of RP in this particular lobby thrived on silly slash awkward situations mainly, so I agreed and we went on an RP date. I even told Java after the RP out of character to make things abundantly clear and set boundaries that I was not interested in dating, and that this was just strictly an RP thing in which he agreed and said he wasn't looking to date either. We became friends and added each other on Discord early January of 2019, where for the majority of the conversations, would discuss RP scenarios for our characters, talk about VR chat in general, I would help him with his VR chat avatars, and get feedback from him on mine. We gradually became close friends. Jabba would start inviting me to private worlds to open up about his home situation and his mental and physical abuse from his family. He would tell me that he never felt comfortable talking about this stuff with anyone before. So in return, I would share stories about my abuse growing up as well and how I dealt with those tough situations. Java knew I had a long-term boyfriend at the time and I played VR in my older brother's family room, so I did not have a private space. I never did anything 
helpful or suggestive in or outside of VR at this time. On January 17th of 2019, Java would once again invite me to a private world. We were both in full body tracking and VR chat. We discussed RP and made small talk before Java would go silent. At first, I thought maybe his mom came into his room, as she often did, and he muted himself to talk to her. I kept talking and I could see him moving slightly, but he kept silent. I asked him if everything was okay and he said it was. I then asked him what he was doing. It was there without asking me if it was okay, out of the blue, with no prior consent and with boundaries already made clear that I did not want to date, that he told me he was, quote, touching to my voice. I froze up. I honestly did not know how to respond at the moment, so I just kept talking. Luckily, it did not last long because suddenly I would see his avatar's head drop to the floor and he would go offline. I would find out shortly after in Discord DMs that his mom had walked in on him. I didn't know how to respond given I was told by him his mom would still physically and yell at him. So my brain switched to make sure he was okay as opposed to addressing what he just did with me, as you can see in the DMs below. Java here saying, so my mother caught me, saying he was in big trouble, and then speaking about personal space. Continuing, my mom is literally having a effing meltdown. What they are doing now is restricting my playtime. They are going to limit my use of internet, and I will only be able to use it for two hours. Further saying, yeah, she's being a it's like I did something horrible. At some point, I would start streaming again. We both continued to appear in Rafflegator's stream slash lobby, and I would stream on the side in which Java would heavily be involved of his own volition. He would go as far as to wake up early in the morning, 4 a.m. Australian time, so he could be on my stream. I did not ask him to be on my stream. He wanted to be there on his own accord. Jokes and teasing started to form around him, orbiting and being lost without me on Rafflegator's and my own stream. We even had an emote on my channel dedicated to him named Raz Orbiter. It was just his VR chat avatar's face. I do greatly appreciate him helping me and appearing on my stream to this day, however. Unfortunately, this was just the start of the obsessive and possessive behavior by him. Off stream, we would hang out in VR chat as well and visit public worlds with our friend groups to meet and talk with new people. His VR headset would end up breaking and we would be without it for a couple of months. During this time, I would learn to dance in VR chat and he would become upset when I would dance for other people or even talk to other guys if he didn't like how they approached or jokingly flirted with me. We got into a lot of arguments over this. I would tell him multiple times to knock it off and it wasn't appropriate. After establishing more boundaries and being understood by both of us, we were able to continue our friendship. But this isn't to say smoothly. I still felt obligated to talk and be with him because of the way he would get upset or at least I felt like I had to keep my conversations with others short. I felt like I couldn't even go visit another friend in VR chat real quick to say hi without potentially upsetting him. We were always with other friends when I did this, so I wasn't leaving him alone. Not that it should have mattered. Java struggles with respecting the LGBTQIA plus community. He would admit to harassing a trans male co-worker by misgendering them on purpose. Java here saying, I pissed off one of my workers today. This bitch was being a bit hypocritical about biology and sh you know the thing I was talking about. If you get a blood transfusion from an African guy, that logically you're part African for a bit. She took it to heart and said, well, no, you are not, because biologically you are not. So today we have a trans male in our workplace. My friend referred to, quote unquote, her as a he. And I was like, she's a girl. Then the bitch I was talking to last week told me to leave. I was like, that's a bit hypocritical of you, because biologically she's a girl. Now you're telling me to believe logic more than biology when you told me me the reverse last week. She's so gay. Further, he also has a history of being scared of males who identify as gay. He would get freaked out if a male hit on him or if someone joked about him being gay in any way. Java saying, my mom was asking me if I have a girlfriend. I said no. And she's like, why? And I told her I was gay. LOL. She said, you're gay? No way, really. And I was like, LOL, fuck no. And then she said, you little Shit, thank God. LOL. Then we walk for the next 20 seconds and ask me, are you actually gay? Raziel asking, well, are you? Jabba responding, hell no. I hate when people say there's a little gay in everyone. This is a mindset he had not grown out of since we last spoke. In the screenshot below, you can see as late as January 2023, he expressed that transgender individuals make him uncomfortable, despite the role Jabba often played for Rafflegator, where he would hit on males while pretending to be a woman. Jabba now 
about Luka Kaneshiro on January 8th of 2023 saying, yeah, trans people make me uncomfortable and pregnant women. Java and I would make friends with someone else by the name of Trouser Gravy. And we all became close friends. Trouser and I were older than Java, so we would often advise him on his hard situations online and IRL. We even split the cost of gifts to send to him for things like his birthday and Christmas. Java would then start to lie about his activities to the both of us or blow us off when we planned to do something together as a group like play Monster Hunter. Trouser Gravy also would be there to see Java get upset over the above aforementioned events. Trouser Gravy and I would heavily encourage Java to go out with his friends IRL and meet with girls he still talked to after high school and were still interested in him. Raziel asking Trouser Gravy, do you remember what we used to argue about? And Trouser Gravy responding, his family life was a big one. How his mom treated him was usually the top one. Him never doing what he said he was going to do, him doing the opposite of what he said he was going to do, or just lying about doing it badly. Like getting caught hanging out with doing something he said he literally wasn't doing. There was one I remember actually about people quote unquote looting him. So you told him to set boundaries, but he never did and just complained about it a lot, but never did anything. He complained about Rob using him for years, which was true, but he loved the attention from Rob's stream, so he just kept hanging out with him. Java was not a good liar. He would come up with fake excuses to blow us off when he got on VR chat to be on Rafflegator's stream, which are two very easy things to look up. There is no offline mode in VR chat, and he was on our friend streams. We would fight about him lying to me about this. Our arguments became more frequent. I would have to sit there and console him for hours as he would get upset over him lying, but also over menial things like me not caring about the same anime as him. Our friendship still persisted, however. Jabba would start to stream on his Twitch channel under the name of Jabba. He decided to do this after gaining popularity by pretending to be a girl in VR chat to trick popular streamers such as Soda Poppin by seducing them and then revealing he was a guy on Rafflegator's stream. I would more or less stop streaming to help Java focus on his stream. This is when I would start to manage his channel and community. My work included keeping him company on stream per request, suggesting games for him to play based on popularity, managing sponsorships, cultivating and managing his community, running and helping his moderation team, coming up with subathon goals and executing the goals that didn't directly involve him, and streaming for him at least once a week so his channel would keep a consistent schedule. Java would lie about his revenue to me, making less than he was telling me during the time, and about going to school. He wasn't even enrolled, among various other things. He would also end up making two sock puppet Twitter accounts to harass others during the Niji Sanji audition process. One named Lolly Springa and the other Hoggers Woggers, saying male VTubers at the moment are just not entertaining. They are more focused on complaining and being sad about being a male VTuber. 98% don't have the personality for it. We've yet to see a dominant individual male VTuber, and I can only name a couple that will take the spot soon. I'm not saying you complain. Most just don't have the mentality to aim for the top, and you can agree, most do. LOL. I have two friends that got their email two weeks and a half ago. Aside from that, they can't say anything else. If you haven't gotten anything, you didn't make it. These messages all dated in January of 2021. Luca not actually having debuted as Luca until the end of that year in December of 2021. Java soon to be Luca being called out here and here as Pogger Woggers saying help it out Pog. Directing to a Java at Java Pog account. Java further stating in January of 2021 about the Nijisanji auditions. No, second round started three days ago. Oh my gosh, just got my second email from Nijisanji and have the video interview on Friday. Wish me luck. They look at your application first. If it's not good enough, they don't watch you. I wonder when there will be an individual male dominant VTuber that doesn't complain all the time about being oppressed. Rather actually prove that male VTubers can do just as well. And then responding to this comment about the individual saying one of their favorite VTubers is a dude, saying back to them, who asked? And when being told to read the room, replying, just saying, most don't have the drive to be number one and accept that it's a female dominated space. Therefore, stop putting yourselves down and actually start doing, then again, there are things you just can't change about you. I would attempt to get into these accounts by using the same passwords he had given me before for other things. It worked. So I verified these accounts were his by almost gaining access to them in which Twitter said an email was sent to an email I recognized for his two-factor authentication. He wasn't even aware he was in Niji Sanji at this point, as it was still too early in the process. When I confirmed the accounts were his, I confronted him about it. At first, he would deny it. He would then admit to it when I showed him the proof of me getting into the accounts. I felt obligated to cover this up to the people who were accusing him. I would also prevent him from talking about other stuff that would get 
get him into trouble, such as the ban he would incur when in the popular GTA 5 RP server, no pixel versus harassment. This is Java copying and pasting the reason why he got banned from the NoPixel admins. That reasoning reading, we've had multiple reports of you pushing harassment during and going against terms of service on a 911 call. The RPer wasn't comfortable with the direction it was heading in terms of him RPing, that his testicle was damaged, causing him to sound like a woman and begging us to help him put it back. You made a racially offensive remark during the heli ride back to the city as well. Tried to grab the EMSs inappropriately, forcing this type of RP on others when they are continuing to ask you to stop and refusing the direction you were going into is a direct terms of service violation and rule break of no pixel and twitch i wanted to reach out to you to let you know why you were removed from the community at this time this would continue until he was offered to be a part of niji sanji and graduated his channel history as luca i remember when java got an email asking for an interview from any color as we were hanging out in vr chat together when he randomly started to shout and exclaim that he got the email we were both beyond excited he asked me what he should wear sent me a pic of his outfit before the video interview to make sure he looked okay and told me about what they said and asked him after the interview. He would be accepted into the Niji Sanji roster to debut in the first English male wave under Luxium. Our relationship was still very good at this point. We would spitball names for his character where we only had the image to go off of. He came up with this little lion plush mascot and had someone whom he commissioned both from and came up with a lot of ideas before we settled on the current design. He couldn't come up with a name for it so I ended up naming it Augustus. We would talk about about his aspirations like how he didn't want to be quote-unquote like other male VTubers. He wanted to go with a non-boyfriend experience. He didn't want to pander or quote-unquote sell out. He wanted a non-lewd quote-unquote say-so personality and really play into the mafia-esque character. Most of the things he was commissioning for his debut went without a hitch, but he would express frustrations on certain things such as commissioning an overlay and not liking it, that the person who was supposed to create his intro slash starting screen was ghosting him, that he he was bad at PowerPoints and needed someone to make his debut slides look pretty. I stepped up and offered to do these things for him. He was my friend and he was frustrated and I wanted to help him the best I could, especially since his debut was very close at this point. Razi al Hair confirming all the things he needed December 13th of 2021, just before debut, including the PowerPoint, stingers, schedules, and outro. Luca then saying, I feel kind of bad making you do so much. I really need to learn for myself. Raziel remarking, I mean, you popped the scheduled thing on me out of the blue today, but it's fine. Shortly after Luxium debuting, Luca would completely cut off contact with his friends he made before Niji Sanji. He never voiced any issues with these friends before and would often hang out with them. To my understanding, when he talked later about friends treating him poorly, he was strictly referring to Rafflegator. Luca and I would start to grow apart. He would accuse me of expecting too much of him. All I would ask is if he wanted to play a game together or get in VR chat or watch something. Comparing me to his abusive mother and would victimize himself if I did ask. He kept reassuring me that I could go to him for anything, vent anytime, and would even love bomb me often in the morning after he woke up. When I did ask to hang out or vent, he would get upset, then would make me feel guilty and minimize my feelings because he could quote unquote never do enough and he could quote unquote never live up to my expectations. This got worse and worse as time went on. Next we have the Ring Fit Adventure incident. Raziel saying this happened early on. Luca had two moderators at the time, including me. Yes, that's right. Just once again to read that again and confirm. Luca Kaneshiro had only two active moderators in chat, even when he had tens of thousands of viewers. Raziel continuing here with, Luca streamed Ring Fit for the first time while I couldn't attend his stream. I rewatched parts of it and saw his chat, and knowing my best friend for years at this point, I asked him after if he was comfortable with what was being said in chat. He told me he wasn't, and he didn't like being and just wanted to work out on stream while being entertaining. I took this as I should moderate this behavior in the chat room and steer people away from posting comments. Luca would stream Ring Fit again where I would be more active in moderating. Myself and the other mod had no channel rules at this time, so we had to do things at our own discretion. Going back to moderating for Java, his chat knew me well and I would joke around with them to try and softly steer conversations in other directions as opposed to being more harsher in the moderation approach, unless I absolutely had to. So I did the same thing in Luca's second Ring Fit stream. This was taken in a wrong way. I didn't ban or time out people for using the hot sweat emoji face, but I did encourage the use of another one when a user suggested it. I only timed out people for obvious 
multiple posts. I called out one user for accusing Luca of moaning on purpose and told them that he was breathing heavily because he was working out very hard. The stream went on without any issues until the very end where someone would super chat Luca asking why his moderators were banning people. We weren't. And Luca would say that he would talk with us, his moderators. I ended up messaging him in a panic, letting him know that we did not ban anyone, only timed out. I talked to him after the stream. He would craft a tweet and ask if it was okay to post that he trusts his moderators. I told him it should be okay and hopefully clear the air about this. I would sit on Twitter and apologize personally to people about what happened during the stream and explain the timeouts. Some took this as an attack, which led to both Luca and I being attacked, harassed, doxxed by having our pictures plastered across various social media sites and more. I personally received a multitude of death this put a giant strain on our friendship. I even asked to speak to his manager at Nijisanji to better formulate a plan on how to best handle this, but both Luca and his manager ignored me. Luca just told me to be a silent mod after that. Luca sending out this tweet, huh? I trust my moderators to do their jobs. Do not lie to me and say they were banning people because of an emo when all they were doing was timing out very weird comments. Stop it. It was all a misunderstanding. Going back to when Luxium debuted, Luca would complain and start comparing his numbers to his wave mate. He'd always been obsessed with comparing himself to others and is always worried about his viewer count and how many people are talking in chat. The number fixation is what drove him away from what he originally wanted to portray. He would be upset if I took notice of his new on-stream personality and overall content change. Luca would start to pander more. He would quote-unquote Fujo bait with the other boys and started a shift towards a more boyfriend experience type content. He would get frustrated and sad I didn't watch his streams anymore, which was for numerous reasons. One was the content shift, the other was his time slot, which was quite late for me. I would occasionally watch his streams, but I couldn't even talk about them because it was like walking on eggshells. I couldn't joke about the things he did or say as he would get upset at me, yet somehow, all we would talk about was Niji Sanji and his streams. Luca here in February of 2022 remarking, there are so many shirtless fan arts, I cannot retweet them because it'll just be weird. Also saying, thinking about my voice tweet one hour ago being... Makes me uncomfortable and I don't want that up. Raziel remarking he would get extremely frustrated and uncomfortable about people s***ing him early on, especially if they compared him to Vox Akuma. He would deny he was being s***. This message is in reference to this voice tweet. Uh, 350k. Huh? That's my little Luke Hubs. He believed he deserved as much attention as his other wave mates were getting, mainly Vox. He would constantly be on sites like 4chan and blame it on Selene showing him. He would ego search Twitter and tell me about it. He would show me fan art and clips people were making of him nonstop and what they were saying about him. He would message fans and lie about it to me directly until this one artist came out about it and told him he was stupid for having casual conversations with his fans like that. This artist slash fan account showing a personal DM from Luca, that fan slash artist saying, ha ha ha, I'm gonna flex this. Document continues with, he would use against the modeler's rules, a password protected MMD model of Luca in VR chat. If we ever did hang out in VR chat, he would go undercover in the Nijisanji Express train world Selen made and eventually the Luxium VR chat world to interact with fans and even reveal he was Luca in disguise. TVS independently confirming that has been the experience of numerous VTubers, Luca luring them away from the crowds in these VR chat worlds and revealing himself to actually be Luca, even containing Pog in his alternate username. Regarding that MMD model, Luca replying, you don't understand, I shouldn't even be using it because the company makes this one. During one of his streams, Luca would play copyrighted music from Tokuyama Toa of Hololive. He found a random YouTube playlist of quote unquote copyright free music and did not vet it and thought it would be okay to play the music on stream. He has a habit of asking for forgiveness later instead of asking for permission. Luca would antagonize 4chan after a hand cam stream where he carved a jack-o'-lantern in October of 2022. The tweet would have random capitalized letters that would read rent l free. That being rent free, I would express to Luca about how this wasn't safe. And now we have this section, Luca's disagreements with other livers. One of the earliest instances of this is when Luca was having a spat with Ike, that being Ike Eveland. 
Mike would offer to mix one of Luca's covers and would go silent on updates. This would lead Luca to pester him, that being Ike, for updates, and upon receiving none, he would commission someone else. After he told Ike this, Ike would start to talk to him again and would allegedly accuse Luca of wasting his time and would get upset about it. Ike would also be vocal on streams, such as during the Friday the 13th and Among Us VR collab about how Luca annoyed him, which in turn caused Luca to be frustrated at him. Luca saying of Ike, I'm debating on messaging Ike that he's been a head the past week. He's just very vocal about his dislike of me on stream. The guy genuinely gets mad at games. He said multiple times it's not funny if it's me. He doesn't find my jokes funny. Tells me to go away. Ignores me. Told me to talk without laughing for once because it's annoying and he can't understand me. For Luxium's first anniversary, Luca would attempt to gather Luxium for ideas on what to do for their first anniversary. She would be the only other member to reply to him. Luca expressed frustration with how the other livers acted poor him because of this. The AR Live event would be cancelled and everyone in Luxium would go on strike except for Luca. Luca would express disdain for this and how his wave mates handle the situation, including sliding management on Twitter. Vox would try to organize meetings to bring grievances to management, such as their merch cut. He would call his wave mates quote unquote childish to me and express how he and Alira would discuss the other livers' behaviors during this time. He would ignore my request of not talking about Niji Sanji. 24-7 and would instead get me involved with his work doing things like building Disneyland and Minecraft so we could quote unquote spend time together. Now we have the section my work for Luca. I was paid in cash or gifts for everything I did for Luca except for mod work. I tried to make a simple contract with Luca later on as he wanted to pay me a monthly salary to more or less be his assistant and work on various projects for him in which he denied the contract and would not allow me to send invoices for the work. I would have to remind him monthly to pay me the amount he said he would, and he would send me the money by way of PayPal and label it as quote unquote commissions or as my birthday. And here we have this invoice from January of 2023, simply entitled Happy Birthday. Raziel talking about this mod work, saying myself and a fan from Lucas past life were his two mods. We had a private discord set up for our mod activities. There's been no activity in it since I was modding for him. The other moderator and I had zero direction for his channel and were completely left to judge things for our Ourselves. Something would come up like his chatters calling him daddy, and I would have to ask after the fact if he was okay with it or not. And he often didn't give us a straight answer. Or he would say he was uncomfortable with something, then go on to do it anyways. After the Ring Fit incident, we both told him he couldn't avoid making rules any longer. We came up with this pretty standard VTuber chat room rules for him, which he disliked, but decided to implement and added unclear wording to be rewriting all of them, including Twitch slang such as Pog as you can see here. These five rules reading, one, do not be weird champion. That is super unpog. Two, be respectful to one another. We only pog and not weird. Three, please avoid one man spamming. Okay. Four, do not backseat unless I say so. And yes, that includes spoilers. Five, please stay on topic during the stream. Do not mention other streamers unless I am talking about them. After the ring fin incident, we would also have to start explaining every single timeout in Bandaluka in the Discord by screenshotting what earn them the timeout slash ban with an explanation per his request. We also have technical support. I would create constant technical support for Luca. The example below shows me trying to help Luca stream Chilla's art game, which had uncapped frames per second and was lagging his stream. He would often ignore my help. When he has technical issues on stream, he often gets angry, frustrated, and shuts down. Luca never tests, downloads, or troubleshoots games or equipment until a couple of minutes before his stream, leading to issues. Luca here, following step by step, right Raziel's commands to technically run a game, and Lucas saying whenever I stream games like this, it ruins my mood like times a hundred. Further, we have credited work. I was credited for doing his intro video and some initial overlays when he debuted. I was also credited for project management for the Luxium VR chat theme park. I also had to gather a lot of the screenshots and information for his quote unquote behind the scenes stream he did after the anniversary. During the Luxium VR chat theme park project, I was not allowed to speak to the other commissioned artists on the project 
until late into the process, which led to it being unfinished. When I did ask Luca to do or say something, it would take him a long time to respond, or I would have to ask multiple times. I was also not allowed to speak with the rest of Luxium to get a better understanding of what they would like to have represent themselves in each of the areas. I would have to scour through wikis, streams, clips, fan art, Twitters, etc. to gather information on each Luxium member. We also have a great deal of uncredited work. While I did more than what is listed below, these are just the most standout moments. I was essentially his assistant, and with that came a lot of smaller projects like making graphics for posting on Twitter, editing overlays, stream thumbnails, curating popular game lists, making banners for his various social media sites, getting fan art for him, and more. We also have Minecraft Disneyland. Not only was this when he would give me his any color internal email address so I could log into his Minecraft account, I would end up making the majority of Luca's Disneyland theme park in Minecraft. This included, but is not limited to, the entrance, carousel, the underground, water roller, coaster, etc., and sprucing up and redecorating things Luca had made. For the maze, I planned everything out for him and set it up for him so he could build it on stream in non-creative mode. This document then showing some work in progress screenshots that was sent to Luca. Raziel adding, while on Luca Kaneshiro's Minecraft account, I was building the Disneyland theme park when Pomo Rainpuff logged in and saw me. I was on Luca's account while it was late for him and he was asleep. She attempted to contact me, but I logged off instead as no one knew it was me on the account and I wasn't supposed to be using his company Minecraft account as he told me he could be terminated if anyone else knew. Pomo in another Discord showing a screenshot from that Minecraft chat asking Luca, do you ever log out? LOL. And Raziel as Luca then logging out. Raziel saying to Luca, I dropped my spaghetti. I don't want to say something weird. Luca replying, but why though? LOL. All you gotta say is pog. Weirder when I don't say anything. We also have the Minecraft Sports Carnival. From what I gather now, this never happened. It was a tournament Luca was planning to run with Nijisanji EN that included popular Minecraft minigames. I ended up making the logo and some decorations in game for it and getting him a list of minigames he could include. Below are some work in progress shots of the logo that was done complete with a fireworks show. Further, we have things like stream overlays. I added overlays for his stream, but one that went completely uncredited was the last minute overlay I did for his Pokemon stream seen below. We also have the schedule graphic. At some point, Luca would express multiple times that he didn't like his current schedule graphic. I asked what he was looking for and he came up with a temporary one for him to use in which he didn't credit me for either while he found someone to commission. Before this, I was also responsible for editing and filling out the graphics for his schedules. I even went out of my way to message artists to make sure it was okay to use their art in the graphics at the beginning. Raziel reaching out to this artist saying I do the graphics for Luca Kaneshiro's schedule every week. I wanted to use your artwork. Is that okay? You will be credited. That artist responding, of course, yes, with pleasure. I'm glad you used it. And here we also have the new schedule that was made, but again, not credited. And it doesn't end there as there was also the second outfit lore slash story plus video script. I would end up writing the lore and video script for Luca's second outfit reveal. It was often hard to get feedback from Luca as he would take him days to get back to me. Luca looking over one of the scenarios and saying, I'm not that bold, so kissing as soon as we meet is too much. Raziel replying, I made the changes. Let me know if they suit it better. Change kiss into quick hug. We further have the Sakura Bloom 2023 voice packs. He asked me to write the script for this voice pack. Luca saying, as the name says, is basically a spring picnic voice pack. Needs to be approximately five to ten minutes, preferably five minutes. Further, there was the Luca Birthday 2023 voice pack plus handwritten merch. I was tasked with writing the voice pack for his 2023 birthday. Birthday. I was also tasked with handwriting his message and signature for his 2023 birthday merchandise. As far as I know, a staff member made the Lucas signature with the heart around it, and he wanted me to trace it for him, so it looked like he did it again, but differently, essentially. He never gave me a message to write, so I eventually had to come up with one myself. Luca responding to that with, I should have written something for it. Raziel continuing, I got done with four scenarios, and also saying, I learned it's hard to write with just giant nails. Hope that's good enough. I can redo it if needed. Even including video files within this document to confirm, yes, this merchandise was not handwritten by Luca Kaneshiro, but instead by his moderator, Raziel. That also including the 1 million subscribers handwritten message. I wrote the handwritten message that was displayed on the Nijisanji World Twitter account that presented Luca thanking his fans for 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Nijisanji management sending to Luca things to do for 1 million subs. Hi, Luca. Since you are very close to 1 million subs now, 
now please proceed the following ASAP. Submit handwritten short message similar to the attached image. This being another message from another Niji Sanji Japan talent, Kanai, after they had hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Look at telling Raziel exactly what to write in cursive and also in Japanese. Further including a video of that proof that they made this message and not Luka Kaneshiro. As now we have the section concerns with any color slash Niji Sanji management plus internal documents that were shared with me. There are multiple times and instances where something would happen and I would ask Luca if they ever received basic public relations PR training. He would inform me they did not. Any colors management felt non-existent from what Luca had told me. Luca also told me early on in his time in Niji Sanji that management told him that he was supposed to be the leader of Luxium. To my understanding, staff has three channels of communications with the Niji Sanji livers. That would be Slack, Microsoft Teams, and Discord. While it was rare I would get screenshots of any internal messages, there are a couple of times I did. One would be about staff showing EN what 3D recording looked like for concerts with a video call. One would be upper management thanking Luca for his hard work through Slack, and the other, already shown above, was asking for a message from Luca for his 1 million subscriber milestone through Discord. This message to Luca from Niji Sanji Management saying, to be honest, I bet everything on EN. If EN had not succeeded, I would have been fired, so I am extremely grateful for your daily cooperation. This individual confirmed to be a part of Niji Sanji Management, now currently higher in management with the company. We also have this revelation. Niji Fest was supposed to happen with Shu, Vox, and Mista getting a 3D spot back in 2022. Luca and Ike were never informed of this and had to find out by way of another liver that they would be left out despite everyone else before Luxium participating in it too. Luca stating, it's just a little petty. Niji Fest is happening soon and they're bringing all the girls and Mista, Vox, and Shu, but excluding me and Ike and everyone else after us. Again, three-fifths of Luxium is going. Why can't we go? I just feel like betrayed. They even gave me false hope, saying they don't know if Luxium is going yet. Then they don't say anything and release the announcement on Twitter today with just three members. I feel sad that the three going never told us. Because I know for sure. I would fight for all five of us to go. Again, I'm just sad about that. I just can't believe it. Just tell me I'm not going next time. I can't wait for people to start asking me why I didn't go to Japan. I just don't get it. Why? Why bring 60% of the unit and just not inform the other 40%? It's so heartbreaking. I've never seriously thought of graduating until today. Again, Petra had to mention to Vox and Mista we're going, and that's how I found out before the announcement. This conversation happening back on August 6th of 2022, well before the first anniversary of Luxium. Luxium, along with other units, would go to Japan in December of 2022 to record songs for AR Live. There was no 3D recorded for this event that I am aware of. The livers were told the event was not canceled at the time, but rather postponed. The only information that they were given was the same the public received, which was that it was postponed due to related issues. In the below screenshots, we can see Luca admitting that while in talks with management, they were not used to livers talking back to them, which caused one of the members of staff to allegedly start crying. Luca saying, I'm sorry, oh my god, we're literally arguing with staff about our one year. No, like, it's bad, we're talking to a vice president, the producer is a big NFT guy. We will literally get cancelled if we proceed with this. Like, big NFT guy. The guy making the song is an NFT guy. Eyes on the song means eyes on the producer. And people are retarded, so they'll start making it seem like we support it. Honestly, I don't think NFTs are that bad. But Poppy Playtime did get f***ed over. Raziel saying in reply to that, they are that bad. They really are. Luca continuing, no, they are very conflicted because they already have the song, but we don't want to sing it because NFT and this sh it doesn't sound like a one-year anniversary song. It's more like a K-pop rap again, like Noctix. Yeah, one of the managers are crying because it's a little scary to give the harsh feedback we are giving right now. Because the guy obviously controls a lot, JP work culture is obviously different, so they are not used to livers talking back. There's also a section of the CEO of Any Color taking Luxium out for a private dinner. Luca saying the place was too fancy. It's one of those Japanese houses where I had to take my shoes off. I was a 
escorted by people in kimonos, I was like, WTF. And we had to sit like on our legs, like an anime. Then it was just like upper management, these millionaires and billionaires. Raziel replying, you're a millionaire. Luca replying, oh yeah, that's right. But I've had dinner with a billionaire. I swear this guy, the CEO, just rocked up in a hoodie. Everything was surreal though. That dinner was basically, we want to support everything you guys do. If you have complaints, let me know. Yeah, we make lots of revenue for them. As the next section is ending our friendship. Luca would become too much for my mental health. And I told him I needed to take a break away from our friendship. I blocked him on Discord after I said I needed some breathing room. I let him know if there was an emergency, it was okay to call slash text me. After a week or so, I found out that allegedly people were making him uncomfortable. And he started to fall asleep on other Niji Sanji Liver streams, something he had never done before. I texted him if he was okay. Luca responding, aside from my sleep being absolutely terrible, I think I'm okay. I just need to fix myself. This is not going to change if I don't do anything. I asked Luca to talk, and that's when he informed me he was going to London to meet with other Niji Sanji Livers. I simply asked that he be safe and just message me that he was when he could. He would end up calling, messaging, and Snapchatting me from time to time to talk about the food he ate, shopping they did, and the such. He did admit he did not kiss Vox when they were playing the Pocky game, and they just pretended for stream. On his way back from London, I informed him of a celebration stream I was having and would be really happy if he could just say hi, not on the Luca account, which he said he would be there, and he ended up not showing up. Slowly, our friendship grew more and more toxic after this. He would tell more lies. He would get more short and frustrated with me. He would ask me to do more things. I would have to comfort him more often than not, and I felt stuck due to the way he acted when I left him alone. He continued to love bomb me. He would promise me things and never fulfill them. I would get extremely hurt, upset, frustrated, and angry in return. He would continue to victimize himself when he lied or broke said promises. He would once again blame himself for quote-unquote not being enough. It shattered my heart that I had to tell him he was enough and reassure him while constantly being tossed aside and mentally abused. He would threaten to not be my friend anymore and that he couldn't handle me if I didn't change or leave him alone. He would still bring up that I didn't watch his streams and that I couldn't be proud of him if I didn't. I reassured him multiple times that I was still proud of him throughout this, all the while doing work for him. He would start to buy me gifts such as Lego sets to replace spending time with me. I would also send him gifts back such as snacks from the US or expensive clothes. The time we did spend together at this point was him sleeping on call, watching anime, or talking about his next project. He never credited me for projects I did anymore or talk about anything we did like he once did. I was becoming a ghost and it was happening very fast. He would go to Japan and tell me about his adventures while there. He would lie about random details while there. Not for his safety, just for whatever reason. Like if he was drinking, who he was with, where he was, etc. Which I would find the truth about later on while listening to other liver streams. Again, it wasn't about safety as he would Snapchat me pictures and videos and send me pictures on Discord of him and other livers and where they were in the moment. I do not know if the other livers knew about him sending me IRL pictures of them. I didn't know if what I was doing would make him upset or not. It was the epitome of toxicity. I was going to therapy and trying different medications to try and feel more normal as I felt like I was the reason he was doing this and I needed to change. I felt that I was the problem and it was my fault he felt this way. His behavior would isolate me from friends old and new. This drove me to be codependent on him. My cat Buffy that I had for three years would die unexpectedly one night. I messaged him for support in which he ignored me to play Minecraft with his new friends. And again played victim saying he lost sleep over my cat dying. Luca responding, Lexi I know how much Buffy meant to you. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me being a common refrain from Luca Kenoshiro? Raziel also adding Luca and I got matching phone cases. Luca would then go on to accidentally reveal the matching phone case during a hand cam stream. After he messaged me in a panic saying I needed to never mention the phone case and if I had any VODs mentioning it to delete them. Saying you might have to hide the VOD where you talked about it. I found out his cover story was that Renzoto had the other matching case. Renzoto being another Australian Niji Sanji talent. I begged him to just never bring up the phone case again. Let it die. Don't talk about it. Don't tweet. Nothing. And let it go as I was in a very fragile state and still scared of his fans and potential harassment. 
basement. A week or two later, Ren would reveal on a hand cam stream that he had the matching case. And here we have the tweet from Lucas saying, yes, I have matching phones with Ren, LOL. Ren allegedly colluding with that, saying we cute AF as Ren's auto clips would share. Ren and Luca had matching phone cases together, showing the matching phone cases from two separate streams, one Luca's, one Ren's. It got so bad that while starting a new medication, I felt something was off. I decided to fly out to my dad's house so he could keep an eye on me, essentially. This is when I would think about seriously committing I was at least coherent enough to realize I was forming a plan in my head to kill myself. And that's when I rushed to my dad to tell him who talked me through it and kept an eye on me for a bit while I talked to my psychologist. I returned home, Luke and I would still be friends, and the toxicity and codependency would continue. He'd get upset at his stream content and what he was doing. He would use me as an excuse not to stream, then blame me for why he wasn't streaming. This boiled to the point where he would lie to me about a drinking stream. I asked him if he really wanted to do it because he would tell me after every single drinking stream, he would, quote, never do it again because he was ashamed of what he said and did on these streams. He said he was going to do it, but not drink. Then as it got closer, he said he would drink a little. Until the day of, he would say he was going out to get booze and he could get drunk, but he promised he would only stream for two hours and that we could hang out. He would get drunk on stream and then stream for four plus hours. I asked him after why he would lie to me about drinking and the length of the stream and he broke down on me. I was scared for his life because of the way he was acting. He completely shut down. He could only scream and kept repeating that he quote unquote couldn't do it anymore and that he quote never wanted to talk to me again. We talked again after this and he more or less repeated that I was too much for him, that he couldn't live up to my expectations, and I was too stressful for him to be around. Luke is saying here, this time last year to Raziel, have I really made that bad of lies recently? I get it. I have expectations that I couldn't fulfill, but that's exactly the problem with me. Sometimes I just get carried away and forget. We would exchange diary-esque updates to each other after this for a couple of months, but I noticed it was making me increasingly anxious. I was going through multiple cancer-removing surgeries, and I didn't have anyone to really talk to about this, as he had isolated me. I was still dependent on him after not updating me on a major life event. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I told him this. He showed me pictures of his family's golden retriever puppy, which turned out to not be his dog, another lie, and apologized. He told me he still wanted to be friends in the future, just not now and he needed to sort things out first. We would stop contacting each other after that. Since then, he has only reached out to me to ask for information for his taxes. He also deleted all of our most recent Discord DMs where he had taken credibility for how he had treated me. And now we have a section of allegations. This one being Aster Arcadia harassing other co-workers. I can confirm that Lucas said that multiple girls were coming to him about the issue since management wouldn't do anything. And he discussed it with with both Alira and I. I personally told him to gather as much evidence as possible and bring it to management since it shouldn't be there, Lucas and Alira's, job to regulate this issue. To my understanding, nothing was done about it. Raziel, including this screenshot, which TBS has verified, stating another Niji Sanji liver confirmed by DM the Aster allegations after this has been made public. Stating to help you with clarity, I remember that incident, it was Aster. And now we have Luca harassing other co-workers. I also received a message from the same Niji Sanji liver above about Luca harassing others inside of Niji Sanji EN. The message read, Luca has done a lot of bad things, not just to you, so thank you for sharing your experience. They also sent me a message reading, a lot of people waited for you to tell the truth for a while because it had been an issue, so I'm happy you finally did. For their privacy, I will neither share the full screenshot nor their name publicly. These messages are what prompted me to make this document. Once again, TVS confirming these messages along with numerous other documents not shared within this Google document. We also have the subject of livers dating each other. Luca would vent about numerous livers dating each other. While some livers dated outside of Niji Sanji, there were at least two pairs that would end up dating each other that I am aware of. This affected Luca and the other livers due to unnecessary drama being created and having to hide relationships publicly. One pair would date for a while, even meeting up IRL 
URL several times and to my understanding ended things amicably. The other pair I knew of would end up dating for a short amount of time due to one side becoming increasingly demanding and vicious towards the other. Luca would ask for my advice on how to handle the situation when they broke up. Further we have harassment plus allegations by fans. There's also been slander thrown at me by organized hate groups. I've been accused of being a and in regards to Java. I never knew Java before he was 18. This can be verified in a multitude of ways by many people, including early clips from Rafflegator's channel. The easiest way to get this information is to check the information and dates on our VR chat legends wikis. Those being linked here in the document. Raziel further stating, let me also say, was forbidden in Rafflegator's streams. Group was big and close enough that any or group would have been called out years ago. And in summary, I want to thank anyone who made it this far to hear my story. I want to bring to light Luca's subtly problematic behavior in hopes that my story can potentially help those who are stuck in a situation that doesn't allow them to speak and let them know they are not alone. In regards to Luca's behavior, I believe his manipulation and follows a fairly straight path of lying to guilt tripping to playing the victim. The lying phase often holds promises he will not keep. When he guilt trips, it may include bursts of anger and rage that leads to him blaming others for why he feels that way. This is what made me become codependent on him. It took me a long time to get over thoughts like, I should have just shut up and listened to him, then we would still be friends, and blame myself for everything. It took months to realize that he very clearly left me with trauma from the emotional he inflicted on me, and I don't want anyone else to get wrapped around his finger like I was. I hope the small stories I have to share about any color slash Niji Sanji's management helps paint a better picture of what some of the livers might be going through. Every job is tough. However, having the pressure and eyes these younger individuals have on them and zero support behind them must be emotionally hauling as they navigate this difficult landscape. Java and I shared a lot of fun and unforgettable memories together. We were best friends for a reason. Not everything was doom and gloom. We love playing games like Minecraft and building things for each other. We love watching things together. We loved RPing and streaming with each other. I wish this was a different timeline where I could highlight all the joy we gave each other instead. I feel sympathetic toward his fans, coworkers, and friends. I know this is a frustrating and hard thing to read. I have no issues if you enjoy someone as an entertainer. All I ask for is for the same respect that I have given to his fans for the past couple of years. Harassing me changes nothing. Thank you again. Once again, a number of allegations and revelations regarding Niji Sanji English's Luka Kaneshiro. Further also saying there are allegations active within Niji Sanji regarding Aster Arcadia. This all while with Good Smile, the Nindoroid for Luka Kaneshiro has now gone on pre-order. And late last night, Niji Sanji English sending out this announcement saying Niji Sanji EN AR Live confirmed. That's right. 14 months after its initial announcement and cancellation, it's back. This pre-recorded event set to stream with an over 40 US dollar cost. Sunday morning in Japan April 14th, that being Saturday night in the West on April 13th. Luka Kaneshiro being a part of this event and also a part of the connected merch drop. As just minutes later, Niji Sanji English would also confirm that the Mario Kart Special Battle Tournament, also featuring Luka Kaneshiro, delayed by two months, will be set to stream on Saturday, April 6th. And that is all for this episode. As always, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe below. Send in your VTuber news to our Discord as we'll have more things VTubers say for you soon.